The officer commanding the DeSoto patrol recommended pulling out. The answer was no. Instead, a second destroyer, the Turner Joy, joined the Maddox, and a second carrier, the Constellation, was sent to reinforce the Ticonderoga. In the next few hours, the gap between what actually happened at sea and what was alleged to have happened began to widen. The two destroyers were ordered to sail on a course that took them within 11 miles of the North Vietnamese coast and four miles of North Vietnam's offshore islands. There was no attempt at concealment. The operation would take place in full daylight. been U.S. retaliation for communist PT boat attacks on the high seas. This is the Maddox, one of the two destroyers that were attacked while patrolling international waters in the Gulf of Tonkin near North Vietnam. Warplanes from two carriers, the Ticonderoga and the Constellation, avenged the unwarranted red assault with 64 sorties to North Vietnam PT bases. The U.S. sorties were launched for one purpose, as a warning to the communists that unprovoked attacks will bring prompt response. renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. While the two destroyers were cruising in company on routine patrol duty in the Tonkin Gulf in international waters some 65 miles from the nearest point of land. Put out that propaganda, but they got caught. Because we were able to disclose within two days that if they would check upon the log of the Maddox, for example, they would find she was only 11 to 13 miles from the bombing of those islands. And of course, that's coverage. And the North Vietnamese knew that it was coverage. Do our uh, naval vessels afford any cover for the... Our our naval vessels afford no cover whatsoever. The sad fact is, history will record that the United States was an aggressor in Tonkin Bay. We were violating the rights of North Vietnam. had no right to proceed on the second day to ourselves bomb uh, North Vietnam, the areas where her torpedo boats were kept. But we had to do it. That wasn't self-defense. Bombing, bombing North Vietnam was not within the right of the president to act in self-defense of the republic. My duties on board the seaplane tender were uh, nuclear weapons officer. On August 4th, there was an alleged attack on the USS Maddox and Turner Joy, two of our destroyers in the Gulf of Tonkin. In the course of our conversation, this chief petty officer told me that he was a sonar man on board the USS Maddox and that he had been in sonar, the sonar room, during the attack. He told me that in his estimation, there were no torpedoes fired at the ship or otherwise during that alleged attack. And furthermore, he constantly repeated this uh, sent this information to the commanding officer on the bridge. The North Vietnamese have no submarines. What is the purpose of that movement? This is purely precautionary, so that the fleet will be prepared for all eventualities. What General sort of eventuality, General? Well, possible submarine attack. By whom? By anyone. You always contended that in the uh, first incident they were having... Uh... I'm, I'm contending that having the, sh the Maddox and the Joy there constituted, in view of the knowledge as to what the South Vietnamese boats were up to, an act of constructive aggression on our part. Johnson had signed the Tonkin Gulf Resolution on August 10th, just a week after the so-called incident. A blank check, his administration was later to call the functional equivalent of a declaration of war. And I pledge to all Americans to use those powers with all the wisdom and the judgment that God grants to me. 
standing behind the president was Senator William Fulbright. He'd steered the resolution through Congress, acting in the belief, he said later, that in its dealings with Congress, the White House told the truth. You gotta remember that Senator Fulbright was a politician of the old school. He was a gentleman, and he just did not believe that his president, his Secretary of State, and the Secretary of Defense would deceive him and try to pull the wool over his eyes and, and asking for his support for a matter of this nature. Uh, he was deceived and he felt very, very badly about his the worst incident he said that ever happened to him in his we career. We always hesitate in public to use the dirty word lies, but a lie is a lie. I mean, it's a misrepresentation of fact. And it's supposed to be a criminal act if it's done under oath. Mr. Johnson didn't say it under oath. He just said it. We, didn't, we don't usually have the president under oath. After midnight, while the air attacks were still underway, a buoyant McNamara briefed Pentagon reporters. Are you ready? Describing the attacks on the destroyers as entirely unprovoked, he claimed that throughout their patrol, the two destroyers had remained at a distance of at least 30 miles from North Vietnam's coast. To Omitting to mention that only that morning he told the president their limit was 11 miles. The course of, of our destroyers operating 30, 40 to 60 miles off the coast of North Vietnam, international waters, moving southward. It was a confident performance until a reporter strayed into dangerous waters. Can you give us the basic reasons for the uh, uh, Gulf of Tonkin patrol? It's a routine patrol of the type we carry out in international waters all over the world. Does it have anything to do with uh, movements of uh, junks or no. whatever it is? Back? No, there, it has no special relationship to, to uh, uh, any uh, operations in that area. And we, we're carrying routine patrols of this kind uh, on all over the world all the time. Do you have yes. any idea why the North Vietnamese may have done this? None. The following morning, August 5th, McNamara was announcing details of the ample forces he had promised the president before the second supposed attack had even begun. Last night I announced that moves were underway to reinforce our forces in the Pacific area. An attack carrier group has been transferred from the first fleet on the Pacific coast to the western Pacific. Secondly, interceptor and fighter bomber aircraft have been moved into South Vietnam. Thirdly, fighter-bomber aircraft have been moved into Thailand. Fourthly, interceptor and fighter-bomber squadrons have been transferred from the United States into advanced bases in the Pacific. Fifthly, an anti-submarine task force group has been moved into the South China Sea. And finally, selected army and marine forces have been alerted and readied for movement. As the juggernaut rolled into action, truth was the first casualty. Johnson wanted the assent of Congress with a minimum of debate or qualification. He was beside himself when the loquacious Senator Hubert Humphrey, the man he planned to make his running mate in the coming presidential election, talked about the commando raids in public. Johnson, determined to protect the authorized version of events, called a mutual friend. Uh, Mr. Hello. Jim. Yes, Mr. President. How you doing? I'm doing fine. You? Pretty good. I don't know, uh, I don't know how to get this message over, but, uh, uh, this boy, our friend Hubert, is just destroying himself with his big mouth. He went on the TV and every person in town that's uh, handling war plans, it just uh, scared them to death because he just blabbed everything that he had heard in a briefing, just like it was his personal knowledge. They said, for instance, how would you account for these uh, PT boat attack on our destroyers when we innocently out there in the Gulf 60 miles from shore? Humphrey said, well, uh, we have been carrying on some operations in that area, and we've been having some covert operations where we have been going in and knocking out roads and patrols things and so forth and that's exactly what we have been doing
In their drive for world domination, the communists have identified different levels of possible conflict to exploit.